Good. I'm close. Don't give me that look. Like you've never dreamt of having sex with your father. You're probably going, okay, not only is this guy a fag, but he lusts after his dad as well. Or you're saying, what a relief. I'm not the only one who's had a wet dream about my dad. Or mom. Or both. Welcome to my world. Recently, I wrote my dad a letter. <laughs> That's probably why I had the dream. We've been estranged for several years now. <sighs> I never should have gone to that damn dinner. Thank you, Daddy. Meet Dad and the stepmom. Sit down. Charming, aren't they? Was that Dr. Blinder? You remember him. A dumb, homophobic psychiatrist they had me see when I was 15, after I was arrested for cruising guys in a shopping mall bathroom. He agreed with me. That you and I both wanted your father. That what we had when you were young was a triangular relationship with you and me fighting over him, your father. That's what I think went wrong back then. <laughs> Smell Lady Freud. She's got it all figured out. Uh, well, <laughs> there's some truth to that. I was attracted to you, Dad. What? Come on, when I was a kid. I thought this conversation was supposed to be about honesty. We were in our own little therapy session. Yeah, without the much needed therapist. When I was a kid, I thought he was the coolest guy. That feeling you have for your dad when you think he is the absolute greatest. One birthday, I was eight or something, and I asked him to wear my favorite shirt of his. The one that I thought he looked most handsome in. Don't kid yourself. Children recognize sexual beauty. They just don't say it to your face. The shirt was basically a white button down, but it had these really pretty light blue and gold stripes running down it. My dad was special. At least to me. Better change those sheets. I'm starting a new life here in LA, and it's not easy. My dad and I were building a connection again before that damn dinner, and I'd like it back. I told him in the letter, if he wants to have a relationship with me, then he needs to act like it. If he doesn't, then he needs to tell me directly, all spelled out. My dad's a good guy. Deep down, I think he really loves me. He probably won't answer for a while. Once he took three months to respond to one of my letters, a therapist I had at the time said that's abuse. I moved here to be a writer, as in film. I guess my relationship with my father could be a movie. Huh, that's good. Movie?
This one's about a woman whose husband is trying to kill her. <laughs> Nobody said Hollywood's about originality. This would be a good vehicle for Ashley Judd. Ever since I was kicked out of the house at 16, I've been trying to have a relationship with my father. The problem is he's a coward. That witch runs the show. You'd have thought I asked him to divorce that woman. Please call me right away. I need you to explain yourself. If you think I would leave her and go on a vacation with you, that I wouldn't go on that kind of a trip with her, please tell me what you meant by your invitation. We're very concerned here. I called him back. You know what she said? I just think it's strange you would ask your father to go on a trip with you. Alone. Didn't you and Sarah go to New York together for a long weekend? Sarah is my daughter. Gotta love it. Always has an answer that makes sense to her. Big Daddy. I like the sound of that. I've been very bad. I need someone to punish me. Interesting. I'll get to my writing in a sec. I love when I get quick action. Yeah? Hey, it's Naughty. What time works for you? Sometimes they get right to the point. <laughs> Saves time, I guess. Uh, one o'clock? Hit me with your address. Later. I got a date. I got a date. Oh, my address. When I sell that screenplay, I'm going to get one of those kettles that just tastefully moans. Ugh. I went to the chiropractor the other day for some neck pain. The first thing she asked me was, have you been drinking coffee? Like I'm supposed to give something up just because it's bad for me. This whole postmodern confessional thing is reminding me of a fictional New York sex columnist brought to life in a premium cable series. I couldn't help but wonder, when is it too pathetic for a grown man to seek the love of his father? It was the day after September 11th. He wasn't too happy to hear from me. Why are you calling? Well, with everything that went on yesterday, I was just calling. I just wanted to see how you are. So how are you? We're fine. You shouldn't have called. You may be asking why I even bother. Some of my friends over the years sure got sick of me complaining about my family. He actually said, why are you calling? I could have told you to do that. Why'd you call? Mm -hmm. I could have told you he'd do that. Why'd you, why'd you call? Yeah, I could have told you that he'd do that. Why'd you call? You gotta let go. He can't give you what you want. Uh, no, no, no. You ever thought you're better off without him? I'm hanging up now. I'm hanging up now. I'm hanging up now. Maybe I'm not meant to have a relationship with him. But he's my dad. And show me someone who can explain the whole family thing anyway. That would be the real doorbell. You think I'm looking for daddy? I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. Oh, 
This guy is good. Oh. 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 That was really great. It was okay. So where do you live? Around. We should do this again sometime. Later. Later. Taking a shower after sex? It's just good hygiene. That's what all the safe sex guidelines say anyway. It's very rare to hook up with someone more than once anyway. Watching movies, good or bad, is such a big part of being a writer. I'm not just procrastinating or avoiding uncomfortable feelings. I have something better to show you. I try to remember there are always people that have it tougher than I do. Jane Eyre, for example. Damn. Oh, I didn't record over it. Damn. Damn, damn. 1996, the Franco Zeffirelli version. Young Jane, played by post-piano Academy Award winner Anna Paquin, arrives at the orphanage after her wicked stepmother, I'm sorry, wicked aunt throws her out of the house. Every girl there is an orphan, right? <laughs> well, duh, it's an orphanage. But the best part is when Jane's a young woman, played by Charlotte Gainsborough. She's come to Thornfield Hall and meets Mrs. Fairfax, the housekeeper, played by Joan Plowright. They're in the chapel, or oof, someplace grim like that. And Jane asks about Mrs. Fairfax's background. And Plowright just looks right at her, plain as day, and says, I have no family. I have no family. No shame, no remorse, just matter of fact. I wish I could be like that. In case you don't know, Joan Plowright was doing Laurence Olivier before he divorced Vivian Lee. Poor thing, Vivian. Supposedly she was a nympho big time. You think she had dreams of her father fucking her? This here is called a query letter, where you try to interest an agent in your work. It's probably easier to get a response from him than from my dad. Oh, it's late. Mail should be here. Oh my god, he wrote back. It's only been a week.
How are we doing here? Gotta get you all tucked in, don't we? Shall I tell you a story? You sure? Okay. Good night, son. Don't you mean goodbye, Dad? I have no family.